we can do a get line if you want, but uh, you don't really need to do the get line because we have the, the code already there for you. So we do it both ways. So for right now, let's just use uh, CN for right now, just to make it, because this is to do the average. So we'll do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to need some functions. And we're going to have a function called, we'll do an integer, and we'll call it get positive number. Actually, we don't even have to do a positive number. We'll just do a get number. And we have this here. So we'll close this and fix that in here. So the first thing we need to do is create an array, or rather create a variable called double average. And it really doesn't matter whether you use double or float. So the first thing we're going to do is then we're going to create a, uh, let's do a constant. And we'll just call it max numbers. And we'll, in this particular case, let's do five. So now we have five numbers over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get five numbers and put it into an array. So let's go and do, now for you, Carlos, what you would want to do if you use a structure, you'd use a, the first field would be an integer array of five, and the second field would be the total. So that way you didn't have to have two separate variables. You can use one structure. That's, you can mm. have an, you can have an array inside a structure, and you can also have a structure inside a structure. But so you can have a, a, a constant structure? Well, yeah, what you, you can have a constant structure when you pass it by typing the word const in front of it. Mm. That, that way, you, because when you pass a structure, well, actually, a structure you need to pass it as um, using the ampersand, otherwise it gets passed as a constant in here. But yeah, oh. you can have a constant structure for um, you know, and you just have to initialize them when you do it. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, let's so let's do this. Let's do it with an integer. So let's create an an integer. Whoops. So we'll do integer, and we'll call them numbers. And this is going to be max numbers. <coughs> so now the first thing we're going to do is. We're going to go and for integer i equals zero, i less than max numbers, and then i plus plus. And in this place, we're just going to do. Um, let's see, we have numbers of i equals get number. So now what we need to do is write get number. So now we're going to do this five times, and we're good to go. So what we need to do here is create a... integer and we'll do number and we're not doing error checking but I'll show you how to do it if we want to do the error checking in here so let's go um, see out okay. enter a number Then C in number. Can you mute your mic because it's going to come out on the video?
All right, so that takes care of this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to return number. Now, if you wanted to check to make sure it was a positive number, you would need a Boolean and, you know, need data. And then you would do a do while need data. You'd enter a number. And then you, if the number um, is greater than zero, then you would just, then you would put need data equals false. And that would take care of that. So now we're going to get a number and we're going to return the number. So let's go up here and get our numbers and I'll print the number. It's always a good idea to do this to make sure that you're getting the right thing. Um, so let's go in and get five numbers and see what happens. So we'll do, we'll do one, three, five, seven, and nine. So that gets our five numbers. So now what we do here is we can do one of two things. We can just add the total here or you can get, create the total. So let's just keep it simple and let's just create a total here. So, so I always recommend before you ever do anything, initialize it again, because we're going to be using it in here. So we're going to do total plus equals numbers of I. And then we'll do C out. Total is and total. So now we're going to get the total in here. So we'll do the same thing and now we should have a running total. All right, so let's do again one, three, we'll do four. So, so far everything's there. So I'll do 10 now, so it should be 18. And then I'll do 20, so it should be 38. So that takes care of this. Now, if uh, you wanted to, you could create an overloaded function. And we'll do integer get number. And we're going to do an integer in this one. And let's see if it lets us do the, the wonderful. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'll just call it index or whatever. Really doesn't matter what you want to call it. So now what we're going to do, if you wanted to get fancy, you can call this in here and we'll copy the exact same code. Only this time we're going to do enter. Um, let's see. Uh, we can get even more fancy in there. Enter number and we'll call it index. And this time it should go. Now what we need to do is when we do, when we call the get number, we're going to, this time, we're going to actually pass in I plus one. And the reason why we want I plus one is because we want to have it start at one. So let's see what this does. 
So enter number one, I need a space. So we'll do one. So total is one. Enter number two, four, six, seven, eight. Boom. So let's get the cosmetic part in here. Enter your name. So again, now remember that when you have a function with the same name, you can put in different parameters. So notice that when I call it with this, it's going to say, okay, let's match this one. Otherwise, you, if you called it without it, it would do this one over here. So now we still have the same thing. So now we're going to need a function called, uh, we'll do one that says get average in here. So we'll do double. Now granted, um, you can do the average in here. Uh, however, this I just want to give you a little bit more experience on functions. So we'll go down in here. So we have this here, and I'm going to change it one more time and add something to it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do, uh, we need a double, and we'll call it average. So average is going to be, um, what did I do wrong? Okay, it's bad. Average is going to be, now we need to make sure that we're doing float or double. We'll, we'll do it to double. Total divided by max numbers. And then I'm going to show you a little better way to do it. And then we're going to return average. So this should now return average and we'll go and call it in here. So we don't need this right now. So we'll do C out the, no, I can do this again. The total of the numbers is, and we do total, and then see out the average is average. So let's see if this works, and we'll do. Um, see out fixed. Now we're not going to do the see out the set precision here because we just want to do it as an integer. So I'm going to do it over here. See out set precision two, and that should take care of this. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, I guess I didn't do the space yet. Um, so we'll do one, three, five, seven, and ten. So the total is twenty-six, and the average is zero. Okay, so that's not really exciting. So this is why you want to do things and test it. So let's see what we did wrong. We did return the average. Average is this. Um, so this usually means something is zero. Um, so, so let me put in here and
And actually, I guess I better check to see maybe I never called it. So that's a common thing. If you get zeros, um, check to see what you're returning first, but then check to see if you actually, did we do the average? And for, and actually that's the answer. We never called the average. All right, so that answers that question. So do average equals get average, and then we need to pass the total. So we don't really need to worry about this here. So let's get rid of this too. So if you're getting zeros, check to see what you're passing back first and also check to see if you actually even called it. So we would have known right off the bat that uh, if there's an issue because it would have never displayed that in there. So let's try it again. We'll do one, three, five, seven, and nine. So the number is nine, the total is 25, and the average is 5.00. So we need to do something so it's an even, not an even number, um, divisible by five. So we'll do three, 67, 22, or 23, 45, and 26. So, oh, we got, the total is 160, all right, so we, oh, it is 3280, okay. So, I saw it at first glance, I thought it said 3200. Um, zero, zero. So, now let's do one other thing. Let's do the get average, and we'll, and we're going to pass two integers. So the first one is going to be total, and then this is max numbers. Well, actually, we don't really, we can call it anyway. Um, um, we can call it total numbers. And then we're going to return average. So basically, it's going to be the same code. Only this time, we'll do it by total numbers. And that's just a little bit more clear in there. And it's another way to do it. Which way to do it? It's really your preference. Doesn't really matter. So let's go to the get average up top here. And we'll do. It just looks to me when you're looking at the code, it looks a little bit neater. So let's try it again. And I need to fix that space that we're missing. Enter a number. All right, so let's try it now. So we'll do two, we'll do five, six, seven, nine, or seven, eight, nine, thirty two, and sixty seven. So the total number is 895, and the average is 179. So we managed to get something that ended in a 5. Let's try to do it again. 2, 4, 6. So the total is 12, 8, and then we'll do 32. So that will end in a 2. And 1040. All right. So that works for that. So... Questions going one. So we, we kind of did a whole bunch of different things in there. Uh, and if you wanted to use get line, you can. You just need to convert it to an integer. Just look at the code that we did. So questions going once, going twice, going two times. I have a question about the last function. With the, uh, the one, this one here? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. where did where are you getting the the total numbers from? We're, we're passing the second time around. We're passing the max numbers in there. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to give you another example of overloading, and you got the way you use them is what makes your program the most readable. Number one, the most important thing is it works. Number two, after that, is readable, so that you can look at what you're doing. And you can see, but this gives you a little bit of more flexibility on how you can work with functions and do different things using the same code in there. Because we really use the same code, we just pass that. So does that make sense, I hope? 